Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats for the next part of the show. Our next guest buys and sells handbags. What's that? Yeah, you're okay. Our next guest buys and sells handbags. It sounds terribly um, uninteresting. Uh, but if I was to tell you that some of her handbags are worth 300 euro each, some of the guys in the room would go, Jesus, you couldn't spend that much on a handbag. And some of the girls in the room would go, yeah, that's cheap. Okay, so if I was to say that some of her handbags are 1,000 and 300 euro each. Some of the guys are starting to wonder, that's where the money goes. And some of the girls are kind of going, yeah, but that's only mid-price. If I was to tell you that some of the handbags she trades are worth over 30,000 euro, I don't know, would somebody be having a coronary, but certainly I would. I wouldn't even like to be in the same room as a handbag worth that, except that we are tonight. So would you please welcome the lady who's gonna tell you how to make a fortune. Yes. From your handbags, Rebecca. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry, I said the right the wrong name. Yeah. Ella de Goodsman from Shop at Ella. Hello, Ryan. Thank you. That's a great introduction. So, tell us a little bit about yourself first, because you're not from around here, are you? No. Well, I moved over here on Paddy's Day of all days on in 2010. Because I met a guy in a bar in Vancouver, where I'm originally from. I'm going to move you closer to that mic. And uh, do you know where he's from? <laughs> The guy, the, the guy, guy I met. Know, well, I'm assuming you may be double eight because you're living here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's from Limerick. It was one of those nights where, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, you're in the pub and you're like, oh, like this is a long time ago. I don't want to. That's a great place to meet Irishmen. Yeah. Two o'clock in the morning in any pub. And I was like, oh my God, I need to go home. I, like, I can't find anyone. It's two o'clock in the morning. And I saw this guy slumped over on a barge. He's not here yet, thank I, God. I, 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 I'm I can tell this right story. There, right there yeah. at the microphone, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, where are you from? And he slumped over, drooling on himself. Oh, that's Limerick. Yeah, like, you know, like, if, like if this. If you said that before, I wouldn't have said Dublin. Yeah, no, no, he's from Limerick. I'm from Limerick. And I'm like, where are you from? And he's like, Limerick. I'm like, where's that? He's like, Ireland. I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll do. That'll do. And then, <laughs> that'll do. That'll do. And then 14 years later, he's still, he's, he's running late because he had to take the dogs home. But yeah, that's oh, why I'm here. over here. All right. Yeah, I, that's why I'm over here. You've an eye for really expensive handbags <laughs> and drunken Irishmen. I can't help yourself. But you know, when I speak to other expat or other Canadians that are living here, I'm like, why are you here? They're like, man, woman, this guy. And I was like, man and marginally better weather, is it? Yeah. Well, Vancouver's pretty dire too, so it's not like, right. you know. Oh, where about, you're in Vancouver City Vancouver, or Vancouver yeah. Island? Vancouver, yeah. Vancouver, Vancouver, wow. British Columbia. So I moved over here and I noticed when I'm, oh, I couldn't work for the first year when I was over here because um, I had to go on a girlfriend visa and I noticed there were nowhere you could buy, sell and trade designer bags or clothes so that's where Shopella came from. Well tell us, how, how like, wait, you're sitting, at, you're sitting there in Cork, is that where you live in Cork Street or Clumbrassel Street? Clumbrassel Street, yeah. Clumbrassel Street. It's, you're sitting there, obviously you can't work, but how does the idea to start trading in expensive handbags come to mind? Well, when I was a teenager, so in the 90s, like uh, me and my friends would actually shop knowing that we're going to resell our things. Like That's just kind of the Canadian way of shopping. So I'd be like, okay, I'm going to buy this jacket, but I'm only really spending like 20 euro, not 50, because I'm going to sell it afterwards. So like even when I was, you know, in my like 16, 18 years old, we would like sell our clothes to like get beer money, gas money, whatever you do when you're a teenager, right? And then when I moved over, I'm like, couldn't believe that no one did that. Like no one did it. I'm like, what do you do with all your old clothes? Like we... I don't know what they did. I actually don't know what people did. So when like we first opened up the first show Ella, most of my customers were actually tourists. Because they, like when I, if there's one advice I can give anyone thinking of starting a small business, don't listen to your family or don't listen to your friends. Because everyone was like, no one's going to buy old clothes and old bags in this country. We all want new things. And I said, no, we're going to do this. Then, yeah. So tell us then about the business. Uh, for example, what's the most expensive bag you've ever traded? Probably in recently it was the Birkin, which was fifteen thousand. A Birkin. Yeah. Some of us would never even have heard that brand name. What What is a Birkin <laughs> handbag, and why is it worth fifteen thousand? Actually, does anyone here know what a Birkin? Not Sue. Sue, you're not allowed to hold up your hand. Does anyone here know what a Birkin looks this like? This is awful. My what? Actually, does any man in here know what a Birkin looks like? No. no? I, 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 I feel awful because my wife is down the back with her hand up as if, yeah, everybody knows what this yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, we love her. We love her. <laughs> so what, what, what is a Birkin handbag? 
If any man in this room raises his hand and can point out which one here is a Birkin, I'm going to give you a 50 euro voucher to the store. Brian, you're the sort of man who would know this one. Have a quick look. <laughs> 50 euro voucher, if you can pick which one is the Birkin, but you can't really come up and look. You have to see, you have to choose from here which one it is. <laughs> which one? This one, no. Okay, anyone else? 50 euro voucher? There's a man here with a broken shoulder. He knows what it is. John. Do you want it? He said the black one. <laughs> the black one. You said the black one to the right? She says. She says. The man with the injury knows what he's talking about. Yeah, the man with the injury knows what he's talking about. 50 year of, I'll get, you have a 50 year voucher to the store. Very so good. That's well, actually, that's very welcome because he's going to be getting married soon and he's going to have to be buying expensive There handbags. you go. You have 50 euros towards your present. <laughs> 50 euros towards your 15 grand present. That's there you exactly. go. <laughs> That will just about get your taxi in and out, <laughs> or the ambulance home when you see the shock on the, the yeah. handbag. But tell us, it's, hold us, hold us okay, up then, a 15 so grand handbag. This one. Now... C come over to Mike, come over okay. to Mike. So Why? this one... Well, no, I have another, I have another <laughs> test question. Hold, hold on one second. Okay. I, I'm going to hold it, because I've never held something so valuable <laughs> no. in my life, and I don't ever intend to do it again. <laughs> Is this... <laughs> What? Children aren't worth 15 grand. They, 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 my wife is getting so excited about this at the back of the room. I'm not running out the room right this minute. It's just <laughs> Anyway, is this really a 15 grand bag? I could buy a car for this. You could buy a few cars. Right. Why is it worth that much? Supply and demand. You can't get, you can't walk. Even if you had 15 grand in your pocket and you walked into Hermes tonight, they wouldn't sell you one. Impossible Where to is Irma? Do we even have in that Brown shop? Thomas. In Brown, Brown Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an Irma's department in Brown Thomas. They don't yeah. even let me in the door of Brown Thomas. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they have these bags, but they won't sell them because you have to kind of order them in advance, is it? It's kind of a secret. Even if you were to contact Hermes and find out how you get onto the secret list, there's no real process by it. Some people say you have to spend about 200,000 euros in the first year and you have to buy like clothes and shoes and scarves and all these other knickknacks before you get onto the list. So you have to prove you have you're to good prove enough it. to own the bags. But then sometimes they'll just sell it to you. You just don't know. It's the luck of the draw. When you're a Kardashian, you'll always get one of the Kardashians. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense, it's, sense to me from, from the point of view of a, of a business model. Adam, my people, are you paying attention here? Roisin. Roisin has two. <laughs> Roisin has two. We'll buy them off you. Wait, don't mind the work, and I want your aluminous trousers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sold to the lady in the front. I, I, yeah. I'll stop paying for my work, and I swear to God. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me as a business model how you can't just go in and buy something. Why is it that you have to prove yourself to be good enough? Because it's Hermes. It's a whole other ball game of bags. And in this bag, is there something that actually makes it worth that amount of money, or is it just the fact that it's Hermes? Like, is this leather so much better than no. you can get anywhere? No. No, it's not. It's, you don't, you don't spend, any girl in here would tell you, you don't, I mean, you probably tell your other halves, like, oh, it's really good quality, but at the end of the day, you are paying for the brand and you're paying for the marketing. It's not going to, like, if I drive over this with my car, it's still going to break. Right. Whereas other brands, it could last. But then... Thing is though, this is actually more, so does anyone know what the cost of this, if, if you were one of their special clients, can anyone here tell you, tell me how much this would cost if you walked into Brown Thomas as a VIP client right now? So I'm selling it for 15K. 30,000? No. 60. No. Although <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have it for 60 if you want. 9,050, oh, right? So if you get on their special list and you can purchase one, I will give you 12 grand and you're going to make how much on an initial investment of 9,000? Three grand, so 33% yeah. 30, profit yeah. within, within an so hour. So if you can just walk in and be that special client and say, I want a black Birkin 35 Togo in Palladium Hardware and they actually sell it to you. Yeah. And, and, you're, and then you feel you can turn around and sell it for 15 grand yeah. almost straight away. Yeah. Hmm. What else have you got? Well, can anyone here, okay, next, okay, next prize, another 50-year voucher to show, but can anyone guess here which one is actually the real one? Was the one I had not real? Can anyone guess? First one wins. No. 
No. The real one. We're looking for the real one in the sash. This one. Yeah. The one you just no. 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 The back one. The back one. Yeah. The back one. 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 The this is the real one. And this is, yeah. yeah. I've recognized by you. Can I hold it? Is it too precious? No, but so it's full of my crap, so that's why I feel like. <laughs> so this is worth, how much did you say? About 1600 And this is a real bag. It's a real bag. And the one I had earlier on was actually a fake. It's a fake bag. Well, and she what? held it very carefully. Yeah, you, <laughs> do. you hold this one carefully. The other one you could throw. I could throw it right. It's, it's, it's still a mystery to me. I'm just wondering, what is it that makes this so valuable? Brand. It's all about the brand. And also, what do you do? Huh? Yeah, the zipper. zipper. Yeah, but, 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 but also, what do you do with the fact that there's so many fakes out there that when I see a bag like this on someone's back or on their shoulder, I don't actually think it's a real bag. I think it's a fake. So, You're one of those. Well, I just you know? assume it is. So if you're going to buy a very expensive bag and there's been 10 other people on the same street holding a similar bag that day, how do you differentiate yourself from... I can spot it, but a lot of people probably couldn't. Right. Right. I met a woman one time who was very into fashion, and we were talking about this, and I said, well, how do you know the difference between a real bag and a fake bag? And she went, you know, she people, you know? And I mean, like, <laughs> I, how do you... I said the same to shoes, like, you know, I mean, we were actually on a holiday, and every corner you went to in this particular city, there's people selling counterfeit, and some glasses and counterfeit bags and counterfeit shoes and the whole lot, of, you know. And I said, How do you know the difference? And she goes, Just look at the wearer. All right. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. That's a really good point. So, yeah. really, it's, who, it's who's holding the bag. No, but some of my best clients will come in, and you know, I have one client, she'll come in in her sweatpants, and she sold probably over 200 grand of merchandise. And you would, she brings her stuff in garbage bags. <clears throat> She's not here in the room right now, but yeah, she like, you would never know. So let's know. go back to telling the difference between a real and a fake. Because if, if I'm if I'm right, I'm yeah. saying that the the guardie actually use you to officially authenticate bags. Yes. So I'll have like we, we I remember this one time at Christmas. It was like December twenty second. The shop was packed, right? And these two cops come into the shop at Chopella, armed with like two two, two Louis Vuitton suitcases full of stolen merchandise. So of course all the shoppers who weren't probably just decide to start browsing even more. I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Like, what's he doing? And they opened up the suit. So I guess another store got raided over the weekend and they stole the shop's worth of contents, right? But they needed me to authenticate each piece to make sure, because apparently in Ireland, if you steal a lot, a huge value, you're actually charged with grand theft as opposed to petty theft. So they need to know what the value of the bags were. And they thought they were actually fake. And I'm like, no, actually, no, they're all real. And they're like, okay, these guys are getting charged big time because it's a bit different. If, it was there, if they were fake, they probably would have only been worth like a couple hundred euro, but because they're worth over five grand, it was like considered, I don't know what the so, Irish law is, but so if you, you steal over them. five grand, it's not good. You're going to jail for a long time. So you got yeah. these guys an extra five years in prison. I got them extra five years in prison, yeah. yeah. And then when the guardie come into you, I, I said, let me just hold up a fake bag again that's similar. Let's say this one, right? That's a really good fake. Yeah. That's a really good I, fake. I wouldn't dispute it for a second. Yeah. Um, by the way, she's not selling these at the end of the night for a yeah, no, no, they're not, no. <laughs> no the face, these are the donated by my clients. When can, they're if they're juice. fakes, we can just toss them out. Yeah, you can, yeah. Which people want them. They're illegal. So, how do you... Someone comes into you. I'm, I'm Garda Jerry here, you know. How's it going there? Can you tell me the real one and tell me the fake one? How you do you look know? at the stitching. This one, you'd look at the font inside the bag. You'd have to look at the date code, how the font lines up. Even, But a lot of people will say, oh, because it's not perfectly lined up, that means it's a counterfeit. That's not true. So it's an old wives' tale. But you have to look at stitching the font, the day code. We actually run an authenticity program in the shop. So every day people will hire me to, if, when they're shopping on eBay and adverts, they'll say, can you, I charge 20 euros for a yes or no answer. And they'll hire me to tell them whether something's really fake, you know. And what's the hardest uh, fake to identify that you've come across? This Gucci bag, Gucci's, yeah. They're getting, they're getting harder and harder to tell what's really fake. Like we guarantee everything for life. So you never have to worry shopping with us. But we always say to customers, when you're shopping online, make sure you're buying from the person, not the product, right? Because you might see a great deal like this. 
Unless you're me, you could anyone. That's such. She totally got screwed. I think she paid like 500 euro for that, and it's worth about 40, 50. You know, so. So you people paying. So what? What is this worth if it's a real bike? Around six, seven hundred. Right. So she thought she was getting a discount of about 200 when yeah. she bought it, yeah. but it turns out that she was being screwed over by about 400 quid. Yeah. But a lot of times people don't know they're buying fake, especially men. Like they think they're doing a good deed. Like their wife will be like, oh, I want a Chanel bag. And they'll see a Chanel bag on adverts. They're like, oh my God, it's only 200 euro. Here you go. And it's really like, no, they're worth like eight, 9,000. So wow. they think they're doing a good thing, but they're, it's not on purpose. People, I, most people don't buy fakes on purpose. It's usually by accident. Right. 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 So what? So if and I just supposing, like, just say there's a bloke out there who didn't like spending too much money on his wife, um, and thought, I thought he saw something that looked really good on done deal. So your advice is that he should somehow borrow it off the buyer, off the seller, and bring it to your shop. Yeah. Pay always you. get authenticated, unless you know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. And you pay. You charge how much for authentication? Twenty euro. And so for 20 euro, he can find out if the bag is actually worth it or yeah. not. And even if he finds out it's not worth it, if it looks real, he can still buy it, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> he probably still buy it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but it is illegal. Like, I was stopped at Venice Airport, and they investigated my Louis Vuitton wallet, and they said, do you realize if I can prove that this wallet's a fake, it's a 200,000 euro fine. It actually happened to me. I'm the type of person, when I go through customs, they, like, pick me out of a crowd, be like, you're getting swabbed, you're getting interviewed, and I'm always in that one. You're saying that you'd be charged 200,000 200, euros for yeah, holding a fake it's, bag. It's illegal. It's, illegal, it's yeah. totally illegal. But yet it's a fight. Like you see dealers in Ireland selling them. It's a complete, it just depends on whether you're going to be the one they make an, they make an example of, right? But, but I've it's never totally heard, illegal. I, I've never heard of anybody yeah. in Ireland being charged with that, have I? I haven't would, would, heard, no. I don't know if anyone here knows anyone who's been charged with a fake. Yeah. But even here, like my clients who posted in these bags, I would say to them, I can't actually legally ship your fake bags back to you because it's illegal. So you have to physically come and retrieve it. Because I, if I'm caught selling, posting, especially being a business. Across international borders. No, you can't, you go, like, yeah, you, they could make an example of you, right, so. Has anybody got a question for Ella? Anyone want to know how to make money? <laughs> how to, yes. So when I was in Dubai, and go to the outlets, you say to the guy selling the fake bags, I want to get a lighter the hills. So if I get a lighter and light the bag, it helps, as opposed to a real leather bag. Yeah, that's a good way. This lady says that, uh, sorry, I just know that the people down the back end here, you're saying that you get a lighter and hold it to the bag. So go to the bag. So you burn a corner in the bag. Yeah, and I say, no, 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 I'll bring you to the real thing. So it's like burning a witch then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you go, people pay 20 or 30 dollars or 40 dollars for Oh. Well, the good start. Your fire. You can tell. Yeah, they they since you see the light coming. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, that's true. Okay, so I, so I was there. Yeah, they always say, "Oh, this is real because you, if you put a light, like, I do it in when I I host Instagram lives and sometimes I can't tell, like especially with brands like Machino or DKNY, sometimes you don't know if it's like the faux leather, but I'll put a lighter to a bag, yeah. and people are always freaking out, going, "Oh my God, you're saying it's real." But if it, yeah, if it's, but thing is, you can have real leather fake bags. So that, yeah, you have to look at everything. Anybody else got a question for Ella? Michael. Yes. How long are you in business? Is this is doing, and where are you based? I am based on Wicklow Street in Dublin. So we've been in business for 12, 12 years now. So when I moved, I moved over in twenty ten, and then we opened up the business in twenty eleven. And before COVID, we had five locations in Dublin, and then obviously COVID happened and shit hit the fan, and we closed three. And so now we're trading just on Wicklow Street there. But it's been good. Like, business went up 22% last year, so we're doing fine. Um, I think right now, more people are starting to shop with knowing, like, they're shopping more sustainably. But until people will act, I still get, you know, people coming in going, why is this bag this much more? It should, should, it should be cheaper. And even if, like, I had this guy, oh my God, he was so annoying. He was in the other day. And sorry, it's always guys that come in. Like, why is this bag only two thousand euro savings? At least this guy was sober and it wasn't two o'clock in the morning. No, so. it wasn't. It was <laughs> but no, we were, he wasn't from Limerick. He wasn't from Limerick. <laughs> we, were, we were selling a Chanel for eight thousand. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's my. Leg. That's why I'm here. 
You can sit here with Sue. Yeah, you can sit here with Sue. This is the two o'clock in the morning man from Limerick. I was Just telling the story. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. See, I've got all on camera. Yes. I've got all on camera. Are you holding your saliva within your mouth tonight? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Good. <laughs> She says the most uh, awful things about you when you're not around. What did she say? I well, said you were slumped over in a bar stool, but that was true. You were drooling. You were drooling. Yeah, it's not part of the truth. Yeah, see? Don't let the truth get in the way. Okay, tell us briefly about what you're doing online with the shops. Well, we're, ho we're doing a lot of Instagram lives. So we started doing Instagram lives when COVID hit. So it's like live stream. I don't know if you guys, anyone's ever watched an Instagram live where you're live stream shopping. Um, they're a lot of fun. Steve tends to be my prop. Holding the bag, yeah. Because he's almost six feet, so I'll be like, no one's gonna look at a bag on someone who's four foot ten. So I'll be like, Steve, come stand up, pretend you're a girl holding a bag, and you don't mind. He's like, he loves it. Yeah. This is like, yeah. <laughs> he really loves it. He went from working in hedge funds to selling ladies' handbags, and wow. you know, so there you go. What a fall from grace. Yeah, fall from grace, yeah. <laughs> okay, any final question for Ella? Where can we find it? Oh, yes. As many as she wants. As many as she wants. That is a very, very interesting question. Because the next question is how many pairs of shoes should a woman have? Uh, Unlimited. There's a question in the back. Uh, uh, um, congratulations on the name of the shop. Excellent. The, um, the practice that you were talking about where you traded clothes and traded things in Vancouver growing up. Is that now part of Irish life? Is that a oh. thing? Has it ever caught on here? No, for sure. Like like I was saying, when we first opened up, most yeah. of our customers were actually, you know, French, Italian, yeah. Germans, where consignment and vintage shopping is quite normal. But now my, my customers will shop knowing, they'll actually even call me and say, if I buy this Chanel bag off you for five grand now, how much will I get in two years? Well, I said, well, it's going up 16% every year, so just do the math. And a couple of years time, you're probably going to make a profit off this. You know, so I mean, it's yeah. Hope that answers that. Um, your, where do you get all your bags from? Is it just people bringing them in, etc., or do you get them um, from companies as well? No, we only source locally. We have about twenty thousand sellers right now, so that's a lot of bank accounts. We're like a bank of bags <laughs> at any given time. But no, we have about twenty thousand sellers that come in. Mostly, most of our sellers are from Cork, Galway, Dublin, and Limerick, and they bring in their bags for sale. You bring your bag. You normally people will send me pictures first, and I'll tell you how much it's worth. And you'll come in, and you either get cash on the day, or bank transfer, or you can use your bags and trade them as store credit. So you can use your clothes. We have swap days where people bring in all their old clothes, and then they walk away with whatever we're selling on that day. Like one girl came in with eight garbage bags of like Zara stuff, and walked out with a Chanel bag, a five grand bag. So people forget how much their stuff is actually worth. You know. What do you do with the Zara clothes? Can you resell them? Yeah. Even though they're Zara, you don't. Yeah, we sell high. We sell everything from high street to high end. So like our cheapest thing in the shop would be a fiver, and then our most expensive would be like fifteen thousand. We have two locations. <laughs> fiver, fifteen grand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've given away our two prizes, have we? Already? Yes, we have the two prizes. <laughs> okay. Two prizes and give it away. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. will you please show your appreciation for Ella de Guzman of Shop Ella. Thank you. I get my bags away, yeah.